Hi, um, my name is Sierra Somerville, um, and I grew up with a father um, who was in long-term recovery. Um, when I was younger, I grew up going to like NA meetings with him, um, so I kind of always grew up in that type of kind of like recovery environment. Um, when I got a little bit older, my parents got divorced. Um, down the line, he got remarried, I had a stepmom. Um, after a while, she passed away. And after that, things went uh, back downhill for him. And um, when I was about 14 years old, he started using again. Um, and for a while, he tried to hide it from me, but unfortunately, hiding it from me was more or less just not showing up and not being there. And he kind of just disappeared, and I didn't really understand what that meant for a little while. And then as I got a little bit older, I kind of understood exactly what was happening. Um, when I got closer to like 16 years old, I had a little bit of a falling out with my mom, um, and she sent me to go stay with him. He was on one of his good patches, um, but unfortunately while I was living with him, he went back out. Um, disappeared for a couple of days, he came back home. Um, I knew, uh, he didn't really wanna say, but after that, um, you know, after growing up, you know, going to meetings and NA and stuff like that, I always told myself, you know, I'm never gonna be that person. I'm never gonna do drugs, you know, I'm never gonna touch any of that kind of stuff. Um, but I, after watching that, you know, that having my stepmom pass away and then my dad going back out, it um, put me in a lot of pain. And unfortunately, I went searching for relief the same way that he did. Um, I was in a relationship where the person enabled me um, and I ended up starting taking opiates. Um, after that, um, like I said, I was about 17 or so when that started. Um, uh, eventually, because when my dad started using again, I, I left and I was kind of homeless for a while. Um, my brother took me in, thankfully, um, when I was 17 and uh, uh, things were a little bit better for a while, but I got a little bit older, kind of had a little bit more autonomy. And when I was 18, I started using again, um, this time more like Xanax. Um, I ended up getting prescribed Xanax, um, and um, when I was 19 years old, um, things got really bad. I remember going on vacation with my mom, um, and I was using the entire time. Um, she was prescribed Xanax as well, and I stole a bunch from her, and I remember watching her cry. Um, a couple weeks later, after we had gotten back home, I, uh, I ran out of my prescription, and I had a breakdown in a Royal Farms parking lot and I had to call my mom to come pick me up and she took me straight to detox, um, which is a really scary experience to have when you're 19. And of course you get there and everybody's like, you're so young, why are you here? Um, uh, after I got out of detox, um, I still didn't really take it 100% seriously. I kept uh, drinking, using, I, I thought to myself, you know, I'm 19, this is what people my age do, right? You know, you drink, you use, you, you party, you have fun, right? Um, and then, uh, a little bit later, the next year, while I was still 19 years old, I ended up with a DUI um, and getting in a lot of legal trouble. Um, thankfully, that put me a little bit on the right path. Um, I started building a better relationship with my mom. Um, my dad, who had gotten clean since then, I started talking to him again because we had fallen off for quite a while after that. And uh, thankfully, they put me back on the right path and I'm, I'm thankful they did. I'm 21 now. Um, I haven't done anything like that in quite a long time, thankfully. Um, but it's, it's scary for sure. Both, you know, seeing it, you know, you say, you know, I'm never, I'm never going to be that person. Then you end up that person and it's kind of like, where am I? I looked at myself in the mirror after that DUI and I was like, what am I doing? This is not who I am as a person. Um, and I don't know, I guess, I guess I just wanted to share my story because I, th I think it's important and I want people who are younger like I am to know that you don't have to be that person who goes out and parties all the time. It's not the person you need to be and you know there's there's hope you don't have to do, have that moment where you look in the mirror and say this isn't me when you got your DUI did you go into any kind of treatment program uh, yeah so they put me in um, alcohol and rehabilitation classes um, and uh, um, I went back to therapy um, um, substance abuse counseling things like that um, and I started going to any meetings with my dad which is um, really really helpful for me for sure when your parents uh, divorced when you were a teenager, was it over his addiction? Yeah. I didn't know. I didn't realize because I was so young. Um, but, yeah, that's why. He was always on and off. I just didn't. I was shielded from it. What was his drug of choice? Um, meth.
And he's clean now? Right now, yeah. I'm very proud of him. What is, um, what is the one thing you think people should know about addiction? It can happen to anyone. Even if you told yourself it's not going to be me or it can't be anyone around me, it can be. It can happen to anybody. We talked a lot uh, in these interviews today as well as yesterday about um, stigma. Tell me a little bit about that um, with, with addiction, the stigma that comes with addiction. Yeah, I mean, my boyfriend's back there, and this is the first time he's hearing about this. It's um, something that, you know, I've always hidden from everybody else because I am terrified of the way that they're going to look at me and see me if I do open my mouth and say this is something I'm struggling with, uh, especially being young um, because, you know, there's this idea that when you're young you go out, you party and things like that. But, um, you know, you can get addictions. You know, you, there, some people can't <laughs> go out and party and do those kinds of things. And it's, it's hard to talk about people Talk about with people your own age because a lot of times they don't understand. They're like, well, can't you just do it and stop? You know? Yeah. Tell me about being here at Healing Appalachia and how that has uh, affected you. The environment here is awesome. I mean, um, you know, when I was younger, I went to a lot of um, music festivals too, but there were a lot of music festivals where, you know, like everybody's doing drugs and things like that. It's a very different environment, you know. Uh, here I feel safe. I, hear, I feel like I can talk to anybody, you know. I. Um, I, I keep naloxone on me, but I got another naloxone training here, which I think is like awesome. Like it's so cool that you guys provide that um, and all the like services and places that you can talk to people and donate. And it's just, it's a gorgeous environment. Definitely nothing like I've ever seen before. Cool. That's good. Uh, quick question. You said you knew you'd never be that person that you were. Was it, did it seem easy to fall into addiction? And why did, why was it easy? Yeah, it was easy. Um, Especially, <laughs> it was definitely easy to fall into it. Um, especially having, you know, seen, you know, family members go through that stuff. It felt like, oh, like, this is something that is all around me. So how, how is it a bad thing? If, if pe people around me are doing it, then, you know, why, why should I not do it? Was that That's a good point. Interesting. Because um, we also talked a little bit about, um, you know, addiction being a, hereditary kind of thing, or being um, susceptible yeah. to addiction, being a hereditary thing where you're more vulnerable to it, easier than other people. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, it, it when I was younger, my mom and my mom's friends and um, all these people in, around me, like I said, I grew up going to NA meetings, you know, they always told me, you know, like, be careful, because it could easily be you. And, you know, when I was younger, I was like, yeah, they're right, it could be me. But when you get older, you start getting kind of desensitized to it, um, especially after my dad started using it again. It's kind of like, oh, well, it's here. It's there. You know, it's wh why, you know, why not try it? You know, I can try it. And then, you know, you fall down the rabbit hole.